you could afford to pay for petrol. $1.50 a litre, $2, $4, in this special Catalyst investigation, we travel from Paris to London to the outer space-like world that is deep sea drilling. Five million dollar machine. Don't want to crash it. To find out why so many industry insiders now say we'll soon look back on 2011 as the good old days when fuel was cheap. OK, let's put oil in context. It's so deeply embedded in our lives and economy, we barely notice it's there. But look how much oil it took to get me here. We use 88 million barrels of oil a day. Oil price impacts everything, yet at some point, world oil production will peak and then decline. Five years ago, when I first reported on this, the idea world peak oil was soon was sort of laughed at by the mainstream. So I'm curious, what are people saying now? Which is why my first stop is here. This is the headquarters of the International Energy Agency. It puts together all the forecasts on oil production over the next 20 years. And it's the body many governments, including our own, look to for accurate advice. This multi-government agency is the voice of the mainstream. And I'm here to meet the man at the top. Hello, Dr Beryl. Who just five years ago was confidently saying oil production will rise to 120 million barrels a day by 2030. But now? When we look at the oil markets, the news are not very bright. We think that the crude oil production has already peaked in 2006. Hang on. Did you get that? Crude oil production for the world peaked in 2006. The existing fields are declining sharply in North Sea, in the United States, in the Gulf of Mexico. Just to stay where we are today, we have to find four new Saudi Arabias. This is a tall order. OK, so what are their current projections, which include tar sands, natural gas liquids, all additional sources of oil? We see the total oil production can increase up to 96 million barrels per day in 2035. But this is the potential. Uh, nobody can guarantee me that the oil under the ground, especially in some key Middle East producers, will be developed and uh, will be brought to the markets in a timely manner. So, no overall peak oil in sight officially, but not the reassurance I was expecting. And frankly, it sounds like he's not confident in his own graphs. Which is interesting, because a team of Swedish scientists say they've proven the IEA projections have a fatal flaw. Physicist Dr. Shell Alaclet is a founding member of the Association for the Study of Peak Oil and has published 20 papers on this issue. And we agree on the fact that there is a decline in existing oil field, but uh, the yet to develop and yet to find is uh, overestimated and uh, it's wrong. It's completely wrong. He's talking about this part, oil fields to be developed and yet to be discovered. So they're, they're using as their figures an extraction rate of oil that's at least twice as high as anything that's been historically done. For a region, yes. Wow. When Dr Alaclet's team used the same raw data but plugged in oil flow rates closer to what's been achieved historically, they got this. And under this scenario, Yes. We're in peak oil already. We are in peak oil already. We have been it in one year already. 
So if Dr Alaclet's team are right and we're already bouncing around in peak oil, how come nobody noticed? Well, in 2008, we hit the global financial crisis. Coincidentally or not, just as oil spiked at $148 a barrel. Recession dropped demand and, according to some, gave us a false sense of security. Over to London. Where these captains of industry are so concerned, they've formed a task force to run their own analyses. While they don't think oil has peaked just yet, their big worry is the oil crunch. Let's not let an oil crunch take us by surprise and be poorly prepared. The oil crunch is when global supply fails to meet demand and starts to drop, and arguably we fear starts to drop uh, so fast that you'd almost call it a collapse. All the calculations tell us that it is, it's going to be no later than 2.14 and it could be as early as 2.13. Currently, they're busy mulling over the fact the IEA's latest oil demand figures have just gone up driven by a surging China and India. If that continues, then, then it brings the crisis right forward. How soon before I can't really afford to fly from Australia? Well, get your flying in fairly quickly, shall we say. Both Skrabowski's group and Alaclet's were once thought of as mavericks. But in the last five years, more and more oil-heavy hitters have swung toward this point of view. The head of Total has said we can't go much higher. The former chairman of Shell is very worried. So why can't we just find more oil? <laughs> to find out, we're off to the coal face. Or is that oil face here in Louisiana's Gulf of Mexico? Home to 3,000 oil and gas platforms. You know, I never really thought much about where all our future oil is going to come from until the Deepwater Horizon exploded. <laughs> On that day, a surge of gas erupted up the drill hole and ignited, killing 11 and unleashing one of the world's worst oil spills. It literally sent shockwaves round the world, but what really had me baffled was the well was about this big. How come it took 80 days to cap it? Well, it turns out offshore oil ain't what it used to be. Wow, look at this thing. These are what run our ocean oil wells now. I'm visiting one of the world's largest manufacturers of remote operated vehicles. This thing's capable of three to 4,000 metres. And we're drilling that deep now? Absolutely. It's not like sticking a pipe in the ground in Texas and shouting, no. I'm rich anymore, no. is it? No. It's not even like the old days of the North Sea, where much shallower oil wells were serviced by divers. All right, guys. At these depths, a human body would be crushed. Uh, we've got a little bit more to go. The water is near freezing point. The gas and oil coming out of the sea floor boiling. Modern deep water drilling is like mining on Mars. Which is why in the BP disaster it took vast dedicated teams months to muster the technology to fix the problem remotely. Yet according to another key observer, our political leaders, economists and captains of industry haven't really cottoned on. The technology has changed so dramatically that some of our thinking is several decades behind. For many people, they can't see the hazards. Uh, it's called risk habituation. You get used to the risk, you don't see it, uh, and it continues to go through what we call risk creep. And if you don't recognize it, it can kill you. Well, they've recognised it now. And post-BP spill saw a rush to regulate. 
What the industry task force fears is that this setback in deep water oil production will delay the production from fields that have already been discovered in deep water. So that will have the effect of bringing forward the inevitability of the peak. Here's the point. These are the IEA projections that show our supply of oil growing slightly. Deep water is where one third of all oil to be discovered or developed is supposed to come from. And while we've focused on deep water oil, similar problems are true of other putative crude replacements. Take tar sands. The biggest fraction of oil is so deep, so you need to boil water and inject steam into the ground to soften it up and get it out, you know. Uh, to do that, in the future, you need to build nuclear power plants just to boil water and uh, inject that into the ground. And uh, the Canadians uh, are doing this now. So it's not going to come and save us, tar sands? Oh, no, no, no. no, no. It may, might be it save Canada. The trends are a clear measure of our desperation for new oil. We've got this rush, this push, uh, to develop these very hazardous uh, reservoirs, and the industry is starting to scare even me. For final comment, I'd like to return to that former bastion of she'll be right, we've got plenty of oil, the International Energy Agency, whose graphs officially show a gentle rise in oil supply over the next 20 years. The time is running out. The oil is today our lifeline. It is everywhere in the economy. If the prices go up or if there is a supply disruption, this will be definitely very bad news. How urgent is this? I think it would have been better if the governments uh, have started to work on it at least uh, 10 years ago. Houston, it's just possible we have a problem.